Welcome back live to the Cox Arena. Chris Marlowe and Heather Cox. Stanford leading Long Beach State in the national championship match. Two games to none. Well, early on, Long Beach State looked pretty good, Heather. That's a big serve in for Brittany Hochaver. Great scoring rotation with Hochaver at the back line. And also a solid blocking game. 17 blocks in the first two games, but then it was all Stanford, led by Olympian Logan Tom on the outside and getting a ton of support in game two from the freshman. Ogunna Namani came to play. 12 kills for Namani, 19 for Logan Tom, and then the faithful Miss Sir Kiri Nishimoto doing what every player has nightmares about, missing a serve to end the game. Take a look at the stats. Stanford dominating in every category, but how about offensively? Long Beach State, known as having the quickest offense in the nation, has just been shut down by the Stanford Cardinal. Also, you look at the hitting errors. Stanford with 16 of those, but they're getting so many swings that they're hitting so much better, and the stars tell the story. Now, we talked about whether Brian Gemolero would switch his lineup as you suggested he would not. Cheryl Weaver is starting in the left front, so it's the same basic matchup that we've had the first two games, and Stanford has gotten the best of it. And I talked to Don Shaw in between games, and he said, hey, in 99, when we swept Long Beach in three, the same thing happened. We got Logan Tom on the matchups we wanted every single game because Brian Gemolero doesn't change. Of course, the reason he doesn't change, he likes to go with his lineup. He's got a lot of substitutions. He plots and plans his lineup uh, the entire offseason and trying to figure out who would play with whom. Well, and he has so much confidence in the system that he believes in. I've had an opportunity to play for both Brian Gimolero and John Dunning, and they coach in drastically different faction, fashions. But Gimolero believes in what his team does on his side of the court and is not concerned about the opponent. All right, now. Stanford in command. They are doing everything perfectly. They're passing better than Long Beach. The setting has been outstanding with Robin Lewis. Logan Tom has been unstoppable. Nagani Namani has been virtually unstoppable. The middles have been good. Ivy has served. They're doing everything you're supposed to do to win a national championship. Taiba Hanif has been outstanding. By far the best Long Beach player. But she's not involved that much because Long Beach kind of out of system. And they need to get to Weaver a little bit more, too, and that's ball control. Yes, they can throw it up to Hanif when they don't have the ball control, but she's not getting pretty swings. And they just can't go to Weaver if they don't have a good pass. Weaver, Heather, through two games, only has five kills and four errors. So she has had a slow first two games. There is the great Cheryl Weaver contemplating. Can she rev it up here? That pass, three ball coming over. Weaver's coming on the slide, and Tom blocks her again. Logan Tom, the greatest slide blocker that the United States has right now. And the exact matchup that John Dunning wants right now. And look at that one-on-one -on -one with Nishimoto. It's the bonus package. Not only do you have Tom blocking Weaver, but with that matchup, you also get Tom hitting over Nishimoto. And yes, she's a good blocker, but she's just outmatched size-wise by the very physical Logan Tom. Nishimoto. Stands 5'7. Tom is a six footer. Tom rips the jumper. It's 3 2. Stanford. And Stanford blocking up a storm on the far side. That was Ashley Ivy. We got her hands on it and give the assist to Tara Conrad. And once again, we're seeing Jim Malero go to his bench so much more than we've seen all season. Lindsey Phillips back in the starting rotation in the front row for Taylor. He needs some production from that second outside hitter. He needs to pass a little bit better. The team not passing very well. Here comes Manif. Logan Tom, great dig. Joust at the net. And Namani is open. Tapping over the top and down. And Stanford is cruising. Every single time that play is wide open with Nishimoto blocking. Hochever is so dug deep. She's on her heels. You can see her move back almost to the end line to dig that hard driven line ball. Not enough time to dig the dink. Manif and Hanif. Puts it away. So Taiba Hanif, who has already uh, received her degree in speech communication, she'll give the ball to Lindsey Phillips. And Phillips set to serve. 5-3, Stanford. And straight down. You know, I saw John Dunning in between games walking down the hall. He was kind of talking to himself. I said, Coach, serve out of bounds. He said, thank God, because we had <laughs> lost the momentum and we were going into the tank. So he got a break there when Kerry Nishimoto put it out. And uh, the national
National Coach of the Year. I, even if you're the National Coach of the Year, you got to get lucky Better sometime. Better be lucky than good. There you go. Ivy and Ivy pounds it on the line. Well, you can't say enough about Ashley Ivy's game this weekend. She has done everything that this team has asked of her, and all the intangibles that don't show up in the stat sheet, keeping the ball alive and keeping the transition game alive for Stanford. Coming over the net, Long Beach in trouble. Seven to three, could be eight to three. No, Stanford into the net. Stanford a year ago, 19 and 12. They were fourth in the Pac-10. They lost Lindsey Kagawa and Jen Detmer, but 11 returning players and Logan Tom for the entire year, and that certainly made a difference. Serving is Weaver, 7-4, still chance for a turnaround if Long Beach can get its act together. Namani, tip long. And a nice play by Kerry Nishimoto. You know, I know what it's like to be a setter and to be getting crummy passes and your hitters can't hit. There's not much a setter can do if the passing is bad and your hitters don't perform for you. 7-5. Namani. Right over the top. So Stanford really taking advantage of Kerry Nishimoto. Well, that's really the first time that we've seen Ogunner Namani hit down the line. She very visibly turned her shoulders to go right over number 10. You know what I say, Heather? If you don't have to hit line, why bother? Why not just pound it straight down where you got the, do what you do best, the right? meat of the court? If they can't stop that, if they can't stop you from hitting cross court, you might as well do that every time. Well, and you get the sense that Cheryl Weaver's trying to compensate a little bit too much for Nishimoto Maybe. now. She's moving over to the line, and that'll just open things up cross court even more. Nishimoto into the bottom of the net. And so, Agana Namani and Brian Jimolero who's been very successful in national championship matches. He's won three out of the four. Things not going his way today. Here comes Hanif. Namani with a dig. Out to Logan Tom. Nishimoto spears it up. Hey, Logan doesn't have to approach much to hit. She just jumps straight up. Going around the horn and the put away for Sarah McGee. Sarah McGee, Tara Conrad, kind of the, the unknown soldiers, the workmanlike people of this Stanford attack. But they have added the diversity and the balance to really open things up for Tom and Namani because, yes, Weaver must respect them out of the middle. Set left. And teeing off is Poche. She hits 100 serves a day in practice. That's how she's works on her jump serve and they need her jump serve back there now Anif will spin it good pass by Sandrick Tom expecting a higher set didn't get it and Elisha Thomas who has not been a factor with the tip Logan Tom nice up by Nishimoto and Hochaver with the put away that could give the beach a little bit of momentum Hochever finding the sweet spot. Look at the area right in the middle of the court against a perimeter defense that is wide open. That's typically the blocks area to defend. Namani is coming out now. Michelle Chambers back in. So Namani Dunning, gets a break. Yeah, wants to just give her a little bit of a break. She's not needed back there to pass and defend. And Chambers, a very good ball control player. A serve for Taiba Hanif. And that's just a lack of communication, serving right down the seam. That's the sign of a good server. You don't want to serve right at the jersey, but instead right in between. 10-9 our score. Logan Tom on the run, hitting the backslide all the way a la Karch Karai back in the mid-80s, starting on the left front, Heather, and hitting a ball all the way on the right side. And so hard to defend because watch the movement in the crossing pattern. She goes across the entire width of the court, having the blockers communicate, talk about it, and eventually there's no blocker up. Emily Lawrence, who has served 12 points today. And Nishimoto starting to ride Hanif. Ashley Ivey got it up, tip. Nishimoto back set, Thomas. No touch. Point, Stanford. Thomas now just one kill, three hitting errors. Nishimoto struggling to find a hot hand when Hanif's in the back row. 12-9 now. Game three, Stanford won the first two. Phillips. Ochaver sets. Phillips, stuffed. And Robin Lewis, red shirt last year with a shoulder injury. Wasn't even sure she could play this year because her knees are so bad. 
And she is giving everything she has. What a courageous performance. She's wincing every single time she hits the ground on those knees. And she said to me, just one more day. I just need one day out of these knees. And Emily Lawrence, how about her for the unsung server? Hochaver, ball dug, coming back over. Thomas. Thomas has just had all kinds of problems. They're keying on the middle, so it's not a complete indictment of the Long Beach Middles because they have blockers up. But Thomas, I bet she only two kills in the match, three errors, she's hitting negative. Stanford's blocking strategy is to make Long Beach's outsides beat you. They want Taylor and Hochaver to get the swings. Ishimoto got the dig, but no one going. The Cox Arena, a crowd of about 10,000. We'll get the specific numbers for you, the largest uh, group of people to ever see a women's sporting event in San Diego. What a venue. Chris Marlowe, Heather Cox, Stanford, taking it to the vaunted Long Beach State 49ers, a team that came in with a chance to make history by going undefeated and winning the national championship at 33-0. But so far, Stanford has been the better team. And there's a lot of pressure. They were the first team to ever do it. Nebraska, of course, has since repeated a year ago. And there's a lot of pressure to go undefeated, to know that, you know, you can make history. And Stanford is playing with absolutely nothing to lose. Well, if Hochaver could be serving all the time for Long Beach, they would do a lot better. She is pounding the jump serve. Lewis into the middle, and that goes out of bounds. The match really turned around in game one, in case you missed it. Long Beach State was up 29-27, had two game points, and couldn't put the Cardinal away. They came back in one game one. Cardinal winning game two despite a big rally and Hope Chaver does it again. Four aces for Hope Chaver. And we're tied at 14. So much control. So many times jump servers have the velocity but they don't have the control. Hope Chaver combines both of them. Lewis back set over to Tom and Tom thunders it through. Logan Tom. And Long Beach, let's see, we're at a media timeout. So Long Beach State and Stanford battling for the national championship. Logan Tom gets the kill. The beach starting to serve. We're coming back. We'll have more right after this. Save a buck or two. Back in San Diego, California, Stanford leading Long Beach State two games to none. Be sure to join ESPN on January 31st at 2 p.m. Eastern for the NCAA Honors Dinner, an annual banquet honoring past and present student-athletes. The highest award bestowed by the NCAA, the Theodore Roosevelt Award, will be given to a distinguished citizen of national reputation and outstanding accomplishment who was a varsity letter winner in college. Well, right now, the faces tell it all. We're in the midst of game three, Stanford in the maroon uniforms, up two games to none. Long Beach State, number one ranked and undefeated, trailing. And the Beach trying to make a run here. They got some needed points on Hochaver, sir. But, you know, the question is, Heather, can the 49ers play good enough volleyball to come back and win? It's one thing to get some points on aces. But they're being out blocked and out played. Right, they've got one person scoring points, and that's Hochaver on the service line. And they've got Hanif offensively, but they don't have all six offensive weapons in system. Cheryl Weaver has just been shut down. Stanford's block has been so effective. They've triple teamed her, double teamed her, they've committed on her, and they've completely shut her down. Logan Tom pounding that ball. Hanif dug by Lewis. Namani. Hanif another dig. Right side. Weaver got blocked. Phillips tip, got a shot by Lindsay Phillips. She is still not 100% recovered from the knee injury, but Brian Gimilera forced to use her in the front line. Gets a production. Right, the big question mark coming into this season was who was going to play that L2, that second outside hitter spot across from Taiba Hanif. It's been Taylor, but they need Phillips. They need that depth. It's a short bench for Brian Gimilero and the Niners. So Phillips got the ace. We're tied at 16. Remember, it's the best three out of five game match. First four games to 30. Fifth and final game, if we get there, would be to 15. How about the freshman going right inside the block of the two All-Americans, going up against Weaver and Hanif and still getting the kill. She's got ice running through those veins. Imani has had 
magnificent afternoon. Conrad serving. Good pass. Nishimoto sets left. And the ball spiked out of bounds by Hanif. Just the second hitting error by Hanif. She's hitting 452. But they really need her now. 18 16. As a team, Long Beach hitting just 206. That's the number one hitting team in the nation hitting that percentage. Tom. And Tom was in the back row. She said, Why did I have to do that? Why me? <laughs> Clearly, Ashley Ivy's ball. Lack of communication. <laughs> Amani got a touch. Nice shot by Namani. Valedictorian and student body president of her high school class and the number one volleyball player as a prep last year. Just so humble. Reminds me a lot of Kristen Fokel her freshman year. Just a great attitude and spirit out there. Ivy serves it out, so Long Beach gets a point back. 19-18. Serve story, Stanford serving good. Long Beach serving story is good too. Very good. In fact, better than good. Give it a superior there. It's the rest of the game. The 49ers are trying to shore up. And Logan Tom pounds it over. She played baseball and basketball growing up. She competed on the boys' basketball team in the fourth grade because of a clerical error. Someone entered her as Tom Logan. And they thought she was a boy and put her on the team. The best part is she stayed on the team. She said, hey, I'm having fun. I'm going to stick with yeah. it. And she was the tallest player. And somebody touched the net. She was the tallest player on her fourth grade team. And one of the best. So she grew up playing against boys. And it has certainly shaped her a tough, very aggressive volleyball player. And a great one, Logan Tom. She's having to pump. She does a lot of work She's for this. She's had to carry yep. a lot of the load. Has taken the majority of the swings tonight. Just a junior. She can come back next year and pound some more Pelotas. The big question mark for next year is will Logan Tom remain with the national team during the summer, during Olympic qualification? There's a very late tournament in August and September, I believe, and if she were to stay with the national team, she wouldn't make it back in time to compete the full season for Stanford. Well, maybe they can just bring her in for the last week and have her uh, rack up 35 kills. Lawrence had the serve. And he's trying to get some momentum. But Stanford is tough. That ball out of bounds. And Logan Tom made a hitting error. Stopped the presses. So Tom has 24 kills, seven errors. She's hitting 333, nine digs, four blocks. Damani chipping in with 17 kills, hitting 464. Tracy Bullcarrot serving. Weaver got a block there. Hanif goes sliding into Weaver. Weaver, perhaps having her worst game and worst match of her career. Six kills, six errors, hitting zero. And she is visibly frustrated. Watch yeah. the reaction after this goes into the net. I mean, there was never a chance for that to clear. She goes straight to the corner to get ready for serve receive. Set Doesn't way, talk to her teammates. Way too low, Heather. We'll go to Phillips. Nice up by Lawrence. Lawrence is a good defensive player and spinning it out. And Long Beach gets the ball back. On the line for Long Beach, a 33-match win streak. Undefeated, the number one team in America. And a trio here in game three. Coach Aver. Ivy tip. Yeah. Once again. When are the 49ers going to adjust? Hochevari needs to read the shoulder of Ivy. Yes, she's hitting over a small block, but that tip has worked five for five today. There's got to be a point at which they bring that right back player up and bring middle black over to dig that line hard down. I'll tell the line. you what, you got to move up anyway because if, if, if she's hitting over the small blocker, you've got to get in there. Going to go straight down anyway. Beautiful dig, Logan Tom. Set to Damani. And she puts it away. And Stanford getting that championship feeling now. Starting to close in on their fifth national title in the last 10 years. Logan Tom carrying the ball. She got the dig. Namani gets the kill. And Stanford just six points away from another national title. Start the week.
What a week in San Diego, California. The NCAA Division I Women's Volleyball Championship. Game three, and it's been all Stanford, led by Logan Tom. She has been an unbelievable presence on the outside. Long Beach State knew that she would get the majority of the swings, but they haven't found a way to stop her. They haven't taken away that sharp cross court, and they haven't limited her touches, and she's done everything this team's asked of her. 24 kills. And now Logan Tom will serve. Just a junior has already played the Olympic Games for the United States, and she has a ticket to Greece in 2004. She's got the ace off the top of the tape. A new rule a couple of years ago, it used to be the worst play in volleyball, the net serve, but now it's a beauty. And the volleyball gods are smiling on Logan Tom and this Stanford team. You know, it was exactly 10 years ago that Stanford won its first ever title in history by upsetting the number one team in the undefeated UCLA Bruins, and it's a certain sense of deja vu today against the undefeated Long Beach 49 Shante Taylor rips it through, and of course UCLA had a couple of big guns then, Natalie Williams. And Elaine Youngs, yep. and both of them were neutralized in that match, and Stanford, of course, was led by College Player of the Year, Bev Oden, this year, led by College Player of the Year, Logan Tom. Stanford hitting 322 today. Long Beach just 196. Don't forget, Long Beach leads the nation in hitting percentage, averaging 364. Just a dismal offensive performance. Mommy done beautifully by Bull Karen. Big play here. Long Beach can't get a swing. Still time to rally. Long Beach rally big in game two. Ivy, nice up by Weaver. Setter. Instead, they go Honey. And Logan dug it. Point blank range. Tom hits it. Bull Karen is there. Beach has got to have this rally if they have hope. Over the top, another fabulous dig by Logan Tom. Namani, not yet. Nishimoto, back line, Hochaber. She hit it out! Logan Tom. People said she was the next Karch Karai. Not of men's volleyball, of course, of women's volleyball. And she looked just like Karch there, digging it all. Nobody all season long has found a way to defend Taiba Hanif until this match and until Logan Tom. 26-22. Weaver puts one through. Playing to 30. Stanford, the team of the 90s, trying to get one in the 2000s, the lower 2000s. And now Weaver will serve it. Lewis. And pounding the ball through with Sarah McGee. Check the numbers. McGee's got six kills. Conrad, her buddy, was seven. And now Ivy will serve. Can Ivy get it in? Stanford just three points away from the title. Nishimoto set left. Damani got it. Going, going, going is Sandrick, and she can't get there. Sandrick started 13 matches last year on her horse. Couldn't quite get there. 27 24. Nishimoto, so that means Nishimoto on the back, a good front line for Long Beach. Deep serve. Set to Namani, it's low, and she hits it off Honey. Namani, the freshman, has looked like a uh, fifth year senior. Composed. Most, yeah, most players would swing away from Hanif, but instead goes right into the hands of the six foot seven blocker. We thought that Brian Gimilaro's team had a great team. A great chance to make history. But it appears that John Dunning's team will have a chance to make history. He's got five seniors on his team. And his goal this year was to get them going. My goal was is to do as much as I could to make it so that the seniors had a chance to have their last year be good. Uh, that just because I came in late that we didn't throw this year away. Uh, that we just didn't just try to do the best we could. You know, I think John Dunning has came in with the perfect attitude and strategy. He didn't want to change too much with five seniors on the squad. It's a veteran experienced team, and he just wanted to come in and keep them on the right path and not disrupt things too much, and that's exactly what he did in 1985, his first year at UOP after following Terry Laskevich. He took players like Terry McGrath and just kept them on the course that they were on and won back-to-back -back national titles in the process. 
A reminder to join ABC Sports tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern and Pacific for the biggest international figure skating event of the year. The USA's Michelle Kwan and Sarah Hughes face Russia's Irina Slutskaya and Maria Futerskaya. It's the United States against the Skyas tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. It's the pairs and dance competition at the Grand Prix of figure skating on ABC. Chris Marlowe and Heather Cox, live volleyball. Stanford two points away from a record fifth NCAA title. Ogunna Namani set to serve. Logan Tom in the front line. Long Beach trying to hang in. Namani, Tom throws it deep. And it's going down. Logan Tom having the match of her collegiate career. Remember, three years ago, Logan Tom played the championship final and did not play well. The crowd is up. 25 kills for Tom. This could be it right here. Stanford, not yet. Pasting it through was Thomas. And right now it takes perfect volleyball out of the 49ers. We saw at the end of game two, a miss serve ended the game. So much pressure on Hanif right now to keep the ball in. Second championship point for Stanford. Do they go to Logan Tom? No, back set. Ball popped up off the bat of McGee. Coach Haver, she is Ruth! And Stanford has won the national championship again. The undefeated season for Long Beach comes to a close. The 49ers finish 33 and one. The Stanford Cardinal at 33 and two. And what can you say about Logan Tom? John Dunning, wow. He made uh, the right decision to switch schools and get on Logan <laughs> Tom's side. Don't you think, Heather Cox? I think any coach in the country would want to have the privilege of coaching Logan Tom, but just an amazing team performance. We saw so much balance and distribution and an all-out team effort. You've got to give the coaching staff a ton of credit. They came out with a flawless game plan and scouting report. Delirious Cardinal players. The Cardinal now 4-0 against Long Beach in NCAA tournament uh, play. Ogana Namani gets the national championship as a freshman. John Dunning, interestingly, becomes the first coach to win NCAA titles at two different schools, UOP and Stanford. So the Stanford Cardinal give Dunning credit. They beat a very fine Long Beach State team to capture the title. Logan Tom, too much. Yes, too much, Logan Tom. We're coming back. Dunning and the Cardinal win the title. Why do I like holiday shopping at Office Depot for my friends and family? Because they have a shipping center right in the store. It's an old-fashioned blue-collar brawl on ESPN Sunday Night Football. In the first matchup, Ray Lewis and the defending Super Bowl champs at the upper hand. Oh, man! But the steel curtain is back with a vengeance. And Cordell Stewart is on the top of his game. Wow! The question remains, with a bus stop in Baltimore to help settle the score, the division-leading Steelers beat the hard-charging Ravens. Steelers, Ravens, 8.30 Sunday on ESPN. Set it up at the 2002 NCAA Division I Women's Volleyball Championship hosted by the University of New Orleans. The slamming action takes place December 19th and 21st at New Orleans Arena in New Orleans, Louisiana. Dig out your tickets by calling 504-587-3804 or log on to NCAAvolleyball.net. Back at the Cox Arena, one more look at championship point. Number 15, is she a blocker or what? 
Logan Tom stuffing championship point. Let's go over to Heather Cox. Heather. Thanks so much, Chris. I'm John Dunning, Logan Tom, and the entire Stanford team. Coach, you did it in 1985, your first year at Pacific. You've done it this year. Certain sense of deja vu. Oh my God, yeah. It's, that was a great group, and this is just a wonderful group of young women. So talented, and really a team. That, this is... John, there's quite a storied history between you and Brian Chimolero and the 49ers. How much did that history help you prepare for this match? You know, we really tried to stay away from all of that because it's just such a separate deal. Uh, we play a little bit differently this year, you know, than teams over there. And, uh, you know, but we did know a lot uh, because we played against her so much. But uh, they had just a great team. Uh, we got some lucky breaks, played very well, but, you know, they're great too. We talked a lot in the offseason about a very difficult decision to leave Pacific for Stanford. Does this national championship help validate that decision a little bit? <laughs> well, I tell you one thing, it's your fun. <laughs> this is the kind of stuff that dreams are made of, and, you know, you just got to enjoy it. And I know they're going to. This is awesome. John, congratulations. We'll let you enjoy it. Thank you. Meanwhile, Heather. Logan, Tom, congratulations. Now in 99, this is certainly a goal of yours. You guys fell a match short. Does this sort of uh, validate the whole thing? Yeah, it does in a way, you know, um, I came in not really talking about it, I'm like, but the NCAA Championship is something every player wants really, really bad. Um, I don't think it's really hit me yet, you know. Um, I'm so happy for my team, just looking at their faces right now is, makes, makes everything worth it. Impossible to compare, and I know everybody asks you about the international experience and playing in Sydney in the Olympics versus winning a national championship. Now you've done both. How do you compare them? They're both so different. Um, you can't really compare them. They both have the great aspects on both sides of them. Um, they're both, I'm going to cherish both experiences though with, every, with all my heart. And I'm sure the team will too. It's going to be a memory that's going to always be with me. How surprised are you? You knew how tough Long Beach was. They beat you earlier in the year that you were actually able to sweep them in three for the title. Yeah, I mean, I give Long Beach is an awesome team. You know, they're physical um, and they, they know how to play volleyball. They're well coached and they have awesome players. Um, but we came out. And we wanted this really bad, and we and we were we were um, we have a great coach right now, and I give him a lot of credit in our team. We just stayed together. Impressive performance, Logan Tom. Congratulations, the Stanford Cardinal with their fifth national title. Chris, back to you. Logan Tom, 25 kills, five blocks, 12 digs, some intimidation, and she set the tone early in the match when she blocked Long Beach State superstar Cheryl Weaver on the second play of the match. Logan Tom and the Cardinal, five titles. We're going to come back and wrap things up for you. The Stanford Cardinal champions here in San Diego.